Hello, Eric the World Walker here. Now I know it's been a while. I've been trying an Ultra Nightmare run of Gen 4 as well as some monotype challenges and not having much luck. But today I'm dropping the difficulty now and finding out can I beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Heart Gold. Here are the rules as well as listed in the description. I head on over to the lab and I get a Cyndaquil that I named Ifrit. He's docile so neutral stats. I'll take that. After going on a grocery run, I run into my rival who I proceed to mop the ground with. I name him Gio, because Giovanni. After getting Pokeballs, I catch a Hoot Hoot I named Tootsie, a Rattata I named Charlene, a Spinarak I named Miles, a Bellsprout I named Flytrap, a Ghastly that I named Kylie, and finally, probably my favorite Gen 2 Pokemon, a Mareep that I named Static. He's bold, so more defense and less attack. Not too worried about that since I plan on using him as a special attacker. Now, a very silly thing happened. My recording messed up on the Faulkner fight. Rest assured, Ifrit and Static took him down with no shenanigans. While farming for shards in the ruin about, my first rock smash was a shiny Geodude, my third shiny catch. I name him Gold. A good sign for the run, right? Right? He's careful, so more special defense and lower special attack. And that works just fine. In Union Cave, I catch a sand shrew that I named Sandal. I don't know why. After clearing out Slowpoke well, Ifrit evolves into Quilava, and I catch a Spearow that I named Spear. While grinding, the egg hatches into Togepi, who I named Omelette. And of course, she has Hustle instead of Serene Grace, as well as being hasty, more speed and less defense. Ugh. Before the gym fight, Static evolves into Flaffy. I take on Bugsy. I lead with Ifrit. Ember does about a third. I hit him twice to activate his berry. A quick attack crits and leaves me with two HP, but one more Ember takes it out. I switch in a few of the others to take a shot at Metapod before I just bring in gold to finish off his two cocoons. Why Buzzy never evolved him still puzzles me to this day. Geo ambushes me as I try to leave town. I start with Static and I hit Thundershock after his Ghastly hits me with Curse. Out is his Croconaw. A Thundershock brings it to half and he hits me, but I take him out with a second Thundershock. After the curse leaves me low, I switch into gold to finish off his Zubat. I then catch a Caterpie in the forest that I name Beedrill because ha. Huh? I grab Headbutt for the move tutor, head back into town, and catch a Heracross who I name Athena. She has a brave nature, more attack but less speed. Not perfect, but certainly usable. And she has a Guts ability. While grinding for Whitney, this ditto transformed and took out Athena with the aerial lace she just learned. That was a hard loss. Needless to say, I was pissed. First death on the board. After grinding the stupidest thing ever, Voltorb flip, I pick up the flamethrower TM and a metronome. I stick those on Ifrit and I go fight Whitney. Out first is her Clefairy. One flamethrower drops her to a third. She mimics flamethrower, but a second one takes her out. Out is her mill tank. She hits Stomp. I don't flinch. Flamethrower drops her to about half. She goes for a track. Oh boy. Ifrit is locked in the turn. She goes for Stomp again, but luckily no flinch. I need this to hit. I go for it. He breaks through, and with the boosted flamethrower, takes it out. Now that one was close. Now, Whitney, let me taste the tears of unfathomable sadness. With that victory, I head out with the squirt bottle, and I catch a Nidoran female that I named Queen, and I catch one of my other favorite Gen 2 Pokemon, Pseudo Wudo, who I named Jim. On my way to Ecritique, Charlene evolves an Eradicate, which is crucial to the next gem. But first, the tower rival fight. Bite took out his Ghastly, his Magnemite misses Supersonic, so two Rock Smashes take it out. Out is his starter. Croconaw misses Scary Face, and I use two Hyper Fangs. He uses Ice Fang, but one more Hyper Fang takes it out. Last is his Zubat, who goes down in two bites and a quick attack. I fight Morty. At the level cap, Charlene learns Crunch, and that's all she wrote. One Crunch takes out his Ghastly, or one Crunch takes out his Haunter. His Gengar outspeeds and uses Mean Look. A Crunch drops it to half, and it gets restored by its Citrus Berry. He puts me to sleep with Hinosis. He starts using the only move he can use, Sucker Punch. I predicted this and put a Citrus Berry on Charlene. She wakes up, and one more Crunch takes out his Gengar. Last is his other Haunter, but next verse, same as the first. After that, I grind Static until he becomes my favorite Gen 2 Pokemon, Ampharos. I then head over to the Lake of Rage where I catch the Gyarados, who I name Ruby. 
I know the level caps for the next three gyms are weird, but I have a plan. Since Chuck has the lowest cap, I go take him on first. I lead with Static, and his primate tries to double team, but one Thunderbolt takes it out. His Polyrath outspeeds and hits me with Body Slam. There's no paralysis, and I take him out with another Thunderbolt. Easy badge. I clear out the Rocket Hideout and then get ready to face Price. He leads with Seal, and I lead with Static. One Thunderbolt takes it out. He sends out Pilot Swine next, so I switch into Ruby. I go for Ice Fang, and it does nothing. I then switch to Dragon Raid, which activates its berry. It, he then starts Hail. He hits me with Blizzard. A second Dragon Rage brings him to about a third, but after Blizzard and Hail, Ruby's at 22 HP. I switch in Flytrap for the sat to get a clean switch. Thank you for your sacrifice. This allows me to get Ifrit in, who takes it out in one flamethrower. Outlast is his Dugong, so I switch back to Static, who takes two Aurora Beams before one-shotting it with Thunderbolt. Last is Jasmine, but a Choice Specs boosted flamethrower does the job in record time. I then grab an Eevee from Bill's house, who I named Noir, because I've never had either of the day cycle evolutions before. He's mild, so more special attack and less defense. Since Umbreon is pretty tanky, I'll take it. While clearing out Radio Tower, Gold gets hit with a defense drop and drops to low health. I know he won't outspeed, so I try and switch him out, but he gets hit with Pursuit, losing me my shiny. I have had bad luck keeping shinies alive. While finishing the tower, Ifrit evolves into a Typhlosion. While grinding on the trainers outside of CN Wood, this trainer with three dust sparks put Jim to sleep. By the time he woke up, he had defense curl and got a rollout chain. I try and take it out, but it survives and takes out Jim with the full power rollout. Four deaths on the board. I go back to the radio tower to fight Archer, but as usual, Static handles it with flying colors. I start making my way through Claire's trainers. This ace trainer crits static with bubble beam. I thought I would outspeed, but it takes him out with the boosted brine. This one was a heartbreaker. Afterwards, Noir evolved into Umbreon. Losing static was a rough loss, so I'm forced to grind up a selection of rookies. I grab Seymour the Magnemite and Snowtust the Swine Nut to grind them up. I get Seymour to level up to become a Magneton, but I lose Snowtust to a self-destructing Geodude. So I replace her with Marina, the tentacle I caught earlier. One eternity later. I get everyone except Marina up to the level cap. And for a very simple reason. I head back to the gym to fight Claire. I lead with Seymour. They eat a Dragon Rage, but one Thunderbolt manages to take it out. Out next is Dragonair. I hit Thunderbolt getting the paralysis, but it breaks through and hits Fire Blast. All that grinding and Voltorb flip. I send out Ruby who takes it out in one Ice Fang. Her second Dragonair suffers the same fate. Outlast is her Kingdra. She hits Dragon Pulse but for not much damage. In turn, Ice Fang does little damage. She starts going for Smoke Screen so I switch to Dragon Rage which misses. After getting hit again, my second Dragon Rage activates her Berry. I manage to hit one more Dragon Rage before getting hit to 7 HP. I then switch into that one reason I mentioned. After B Drill's sacrifice, I came up with a new plan. I sent out Noir, who hits a weak Shadow Ball, and she Hyper Potions. I hit Quick Attack for nothing, so I go for it. I start using Sand Attack. She hits Hydro Pump for a little bit of damage, but it works. I drop her accuracy all the way, and then I start hitting Shadow Balls, hoping for the special drop. I don't get it, but she can't hit me, and I just whittle her down with Shadow Ball until I eventually take her out and win the battle. I can't find the footage, but I beat the Kimono Girls and had the smoke ball on Sandal to run away. They didn't like that. I need an electric replacement, so I catch a Chin Chow that I name Abyss. While grinding Marina on Victory Road, I misclick and use Whirlpool, which allows a Graveler to take her out. Trying to figure out my last team member, I set alone Dude the Quacksire. One eternity later. I grind everyone up, and I'm ready to take on my rival for the last time. I lead with Abyss, who takes two faint attacks and takes out Sneasel with two signal beams. He takes a slash from Feraligator, who takes a Thunderbolt, but gets paralyzed and gets taken out with a second bolt. Out is his Magneton. I swap in Ifrit, who gets hit with Supersonic, paralyzed and hit with Spark, but it breaks through both to hit Lava Plume. Out is his Haunter, so I swap in Noir. He mean looks and curses, but one Dark Pulse takes it out. Next is his Goldback. I send out Ruby, it hits a weak air cutter, 
and I take it out with one ice bag. Last is his cadaver, but one bite takes it out through the reflect. I get everyone up to the level cap except Duke, who I give the experience share to. Here's who I'm working with. After a little nod from Noir, I head to the door and then stop and double check a few things. After that, and a rally cry from Abyss, we step into the Elite Four. Up first is the Psychic Trainer, Will. Abyss one-shots his Zatu with Thunderbolt. Next is his Jinx. Signal Beam brings it down to half, and it gets the confusion. I switch into Noir as his Jinx hits herself. Then I use Shadow Ball to take it out. Next is his Executor. I use Dark Pulse and it leaves it with a sliver, and it puts up Reflect. Does it matter? As one Dark Pulse takes it out. Next is his Slowbro, who takes a Dark Pulse, but just goes for Curse. One Shadow Ball takes it out. Last is his second Zatu. Shadow Ball leaves it with a third, and it heals with its berry. It goes for Aerial Ace, but one more Shadow Ball takes it out. Next is Kolga, but Ifrit took on his entire team with the ease and flamethrower. Muck was the only real problem due to its bulk, but it wasn't enough. Up next is a fight I didn't expect from Bruno. I lead with Omelette, who gets hit with Quick Attack. Extra Sensory leaves Hitmo on top in the red. He full restores, and a second ES only drops it to the yellow. A second takes it out. He sends out Hitmonchan, and it outspeeds and takes Omelette out with a Thunder Punch. I switch Abyss in and go for Thunderbolt. It crits, but it leaves it with a slipper. A second T-Bolt takes him out. Next is Onyx. I know it has Earthquake, so I switch into Ruby. I then hit it with Waterfall to take it out. Next is his Ace Machamp. This thing has coverage for my entire team, so I go for it. I hit Dragon Dance, and it goes for Rock Slide. It drops me to half, and I go for Return, and leaves it with a third, activating its berry. I have no choice. I stay in. He hits Rock Slide. I survive with 9 HP, and one more return takes it out. Last is him only, so I send out Ifrit. He hits High Jump Kick, which drops me to half. I outspeed, but Flamethrower doesn't take it out. Luckily, it goes for Focus Energy, and I take it out with one more Flamethrower. That was closer than it had any right to be. I almost lost to Bruno. Last is Karen. I lead with Ifrit. I go for Lava Plume, and it leaves Umbreon with half. Since I'm locked in, I go for it again, and it takes it out. Next is our Gengar. I go for Lava Plume, and it leaves it with a sliver. It hits me with Spite, and then she full restores. I hit Lava Plume again, and get a crit taking it out. Next is our Houndoom. I swap into Ruby. It goes for Nasty Plot. Oh, no. It gets another in, and if it attacks, it's going to sweep my entire team. I have to go for it. I go for Waterfall and I managed to one-shot her Houndoom. Her Murkrow goes down in one Ice Fang. I swap an Ifrit to deal with her Vileplume, and despite getting paralyzed and critted, he takes her down, winning that fight. Now the champion lands. I have a team to where I could maybe take him on in a straight up fight, but I don't gamble with maybes. It's Gyarados versus Gyarados. I start Dragon Dancing, and he hits me with Dragon Pulses. I get low, but I attach a Citrus Berry to stay alive. I got greedy and managed to hang on, and then I start to sweep. One return takes out his Gyarados, one Ice Fang takes out his Aerodactyl, and all of his Dragonites go down to one Ice Fang. And finally, one Waterfall takes out his Charizard, crowning me the champion. That last fight wasn't the most dramatic, but it's not the last. There's one more fight to go. The secret final boss, Red. In Kanto, the only noteworthy catch was my replacement for Togetic, a Snorlax who I named Beef Deluxe. The gyms in Kanto aren't much to note except for Brock, who while I was fighting, I forgot that Omastar was part rock. I tried to use Return, which resulted in Ruby meeting her end. One of the major fights in Kanto is here, versus Blue. He leaves with Executor, and I lead with Ifrit, who takes it out in one flamethrower. Out is Rhydon. I send out my best counter, a leveled up dude who takes a stone edge and one shots right on with surf. Out is his Machamp, and I've been here before. It hits dynamic punch thanks to his no guard and confuses dude. He breaks through confusion, but surf does nothing. I use one of my sack Pokemon to take the hit. I bring in Ifrit, who I know outspeeds and hits a choice specs boosted lava pool. Out is his Gyarados, so I swap in Abyss. It goes for Dragon Dance and outspeeds me and hits return. Abyss tanks it and hits a four times effective Thunderbolt to take it out. Out is his Arcanine, who hits Flare Blitz and crits, dropping Abyss to the red, but he hangs on and takes him out with Surf. 
Last is his Pidgeot. So I swap in Nemo to eat the return so I can swap in Ifrit to finish him off with a nice eruption. And with that, I have all 16 badges. Now, full disclosure, I really don't have the time to grind up an entire team to Red's cap, so I use a stockpile of rare candies to level everyone up. Just wanted to be transparent about that. After specking everyone the best I could, and Duke sensing the impending battle, I go face my destiny. Red sends out his Pikachu and I send out Duke. He goes for Iron Tail and misses, and I hit Earthquake taking down his Pikachu. Next is his Venusaur, so I send out Ifrit. He hits a weak Giga Drain, and then I proceed to take it out with a boosted eruption. Out is his blast toys. I send out Abyss. He hits two focus blasts, one that drops me to half and gets the special drop, and a thunderbolt only brings it to the red. He full restores and I go for another thunderbolt. It leaves it in the red after hail. He misses focus blast, allowing me to take it out with one more thunderbolt. Out is this Snorlax, so I swap in Roman the Machamp. I realize that I should have gotten low kick back due to Snorlax's weight. I go for Cross Chop. It leaves it in the red. It goes for Blizzard dropping me down. Red then full restores. I go for Fido Throw, but it only does half. He outspeeds and takes out Roman with Blizzard. I send out my Snorlax and I get hit with Crunch. I go for Belly Drum, but it leaves me with 73 HP after hail. I try and go for Strength, but I get outsped and taken out. I send out Noir. I go for Dalt Pulse, but it hangs on and hits Blizzard. I go for Quick Attack and that finally finishes his Snorlax. Out next is his Lapras. I start hitting Dart Pulse, but it does little. I get the flinch. I go for it again and it goes for Blizzard. I use Moonlight to heal. He goes for Blizzard, dropping me even lower. I decide to stay in and chip down Lapras. I hit one more Shadow Ball before Noir gets taken out with Blizzard. I swap in Abyss, who hits a Thunderbolt taking out Lapras. Last is his Charizard. I go for Surf and hope it's enough to take it down, but it leaves it in the yellow, and I finally get taken out. I know he's going to full restore, so I switch in Ifrit. Since Earthquake won't affect Charizard, I just go for Flamethrower to do damage. I go for one more Flamethrower, and that's just enough after Hail to take out Charizard and beat the final boss red. That was an adventure. I'm currently working on more Nuzlocks as well as some Monotype challenges that I hope to have up soon. Thank you and a gentle reminder to you to keep your eye on the world.